we're still at it. Uh, I've spent a little time putting brand new ends on the end of each of these wires. I stripped it back just a, just a little bit, not much. Uh, you know, you don't want to be going a millimeter further than you really need to. You know, it could be easily fixed, just splice a wire on, but why go through all that? And uh, this capacitor right here is a 6.8 uh, microfarad 450 volt rated capacitor. It's electrolytic. Uh, I will be taking this plate back up and all of this back up. We'll be removing that last silver capacitor here. We're going to replace it with this 6.8 microfarad. I'm getting ready to finally replace this uh, capacitor with that electrolytic, but first, uh, this thing has been dug out by someone in the past. And uh, what I need to do is put some uh, liquid tape on the insulation on these wires just to protect it a little bit before I replace this capacitor. Also, the flex point on this little grounding strap is beginning to get really weak. So I'm going to put me a bunch of uh, uh, liquid tape on that too. So let's do that first. We'll go ahead and put a little liquid tape also on this bare spot on this wire right here. And here's another piece of electrical tape we're going to go ahead and remove. It has a, a bare spot down on the insulation also. We'll go ahead and coat that with uh, some liquid tape also. While the liquid tape is drying, let's go ahead and get this capacitor out of here. Just go ahead and lop it right off. Capacitor is probably good, but I don't want it in there. Now we're going to have to desolder this wire here, strip this uh, end of this one back, and go ahead and fasten up our new capacitor. The red wire of the electrolytic has been soldered on. Now I can remove this tape that was holding up the heat shrink out of the way till I got till I got the wire soldered. Now we'll go ahead and slide the heat shrink on down right over the top of that and cover it all the way down to the tar like so. Now I'll go ahead and heat shrink that. And next We'll go ahead and solder this. I made a coil on each end of these wires. This is the way I did it. And this coil will slip over the top of this ground wire here that I have tinned. So let's go ahead and shrink this up first. Alright, the heat shrink has now been shrunken, I guess is the proper word. I don't know. But anyway, this will give this much more strength than it had to begin with because the, the heat shrink goes all the way to the tar. Now what I'm going to do is put a little bit of liquid tape around the bottom here and secure it a, a little bit better so I don't have quite that much movement. I'm, I, I don't want that wire to break off. Alright, next we'll work on the, uh, ground, the ground wire. And we're going to also put a piece of uh, heat shrink on it. So we'll slide it up the wire, hold it in place with tape and do the same thing we did with the other side. Well, that's it. The negative of the electrolytic. The negative of the electrolytic is hooked to ground, and the positive is hooked to the wire that goes down in there to the choke. So now we need to reposition this thing down in there and kind of get it to where there's no strain on either one of these wires. Okay, lastly, just in case I made a mistake in my diagnosis of everything here in my troubleshooting. And I may have to go back and make some corrections. I decided to just go ahead and put a, rather than nip that bare end off of that stub that I made, so I, so I could use my multimeter on it, I've decided to just go ahead and put a piece of heat shrink over it and shrink it down, and then just sort of push it out of the way. And you never know, I could be totally wrong on what I came up with and then have to remove that thing and do more testing. There you go, I put the heat shrink on it, shrunk it down, and uh, I've got it pushed down out of the way. You never know. You know, I'm not going to count my chickens before they're hatched. When I turn this baby on, it may not work at all, and then I have to come back and recheck everything. I don't want to have a wire that I can't use uh, during the process of troubleshooting and oming things out. So I'll keep that baby handy. It won't hurt anything like that. It's in good condition. 
So I was just getting ready to, you know, button things back up here. And uh, I decided I'd go ahead and test the resistors underneath here. They're all wire wound, with the exception of these last two. These last two are in like a little fuse holder kind of arrangement. And they snap in. And those last two would be this resistor here and this resistor here. Uh, the top one supposedly uh, supposed to read 12,500 ohms. So let's hook up our meter to the top one here. Now they're both hooked together on the other side. You can see right here they're both hooked together right there. 12,500 ohms. I'm getting 16,500. You know, it's pretty high, but you know, at least it's somewhere close. Now let's test the 100,000 ohm resistor, which is this one right here. I'm on the 2 meg scale. It's reading over 300,000 ohms. Got a problem there. I don't know. Right now my inclination is to remove this fuse-like uh, resistor and maybe solder a uh, 100,000 ohm resistor from one side of that fuse holder clip over here to the other side. I don't know. I need to check with a few people first. So that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And uh, I appreciate you watching one more time. Sorry for the delay, but you know, you've got to do all this. I tried to get this plate off and these screws won't come out. And in order to get those screws out, I'd have to take all the screws off, nuts off the top, then take the nuts off the center. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I can check out all these things without having to do that. And the only problem, everything's got continuity. The only problem I'm having is that 100,000 ohm resistor. Anyway, that's it for now. I appreciate you watching one more time. This is John. See you next time.